Hi, my name is Bill Payne, and I am here to do a recording of the steps and the processes of re-canvassing a uh, wooden canvas canoe. Doing this for the uh, Northwest uh, chapter of the Wooden Canoe Heritage Association, and with my son-in-law Edgar Valen Valentine's good help, he's uh, operating the camera, and we'll do some work. So why don't we go into the shop? ready to go into the canvas with just a, a few more uh, adjustments. Um, before we do that, I wanted to give you a little background on the canoe and what it means to uh, me and my wife. Uh, this is a 15 and a half foot Peterborough minaret. Uh, it was built in the early 60s. Uh, because of the time frame of canoe construction, fiberglass was overwhelming uh, the economic factors of building a wooden canvas canoe. They were using uh, a lot of iron fasteners, things that uh, high-end craft might not have. And this boat was used in the uh, Puget Sound by a couple who uh, liked to sail. And it uh, got invaded by salt water, which is, you can't keep salt water out when you put them in the, uh, the Puget Sound like that. So over the years, it had a, a lot of uh, negative effects uh, and the corrosion just keeps going on and on with electrolysis. So it affected the, uh, the, the deck bolts, or excuse me, the deck bolts, the seat bolts, and all these uh, rib to in whale fasteners were iron. And it really made quite a mess. Uh, but it's the first canoe, I, a wooden canoe I had out here in the Northwest. And uh, it was about the time I met my wife, 1989. And so we did some courting in this canoe. And it has that sentimental value. Uh, there's a lot more involved in this than a person could buy a new canoe for, but that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've taken a long time to do the restoration and the mechanical part. I had all the interior varnish stripped uh, in a, a, a vat dip. Uh, and that gave me that saved me some time, cost me some money, but uh, it gave me a place to start. So I've got, uh, basically the new parts are the new stems on each end, the decks, the in whales, the carry thwarts, the thwart, and in order to access the rib heads, I had to take all the shear planking off so that I could access these, these uh, rib tips. And I spent a lot of time uh, filling the holes with uh, toothpicks and glue, epoxy, and trying to restore the uh, nice squared off shape. So having said all that, mechanically it's ready to go. Uh, I did my varnish on the canoe before I put it in canvas. Sometimes varnishing a canoe inside of a canvas job, the, the varnish will kind of uh, wick through and it'll kiss the back side of the canvas and it makes kind of a, an unsightly look. It's hard to cover up with the filler. Um, and here's, here's a picture of Ursula and I. This is down in Oregon. And this is what it looked like back in about 1990, 91. Aside from the sentimental reasons, uh, the canoe is, has uh, uh, pleasant qualities, it's uh, relatively light, it's a, it's a wonderful day tripper for two, uh, it's a lovely solo canoe, and it's not too tender. I've, I've been in uh, boats of this size that are pretty tender, so it, I don't have to be on my guard all the time. <laughs> so, uh, let's have a look at some of the, uh, the materials that go into this and the tools before we go to the canvas canvas work. It's all pretty basic stuff. Some of it's kind of specialized. Um, clinch iron, nice brass one, bronze one. Canvas pliers uh, for stretching uh, at the, at the uh, shear line. Now the brass tacks and the copper tacks and Roland Thurlow's wonderful Northwoods Canoe Company 
canoe canvas filler, uh, and just boxes of screws and fasteners and materials like that. So I'm going to go down and stretch some of the canvas. So <clears throat> I like to do the canvas the way some people that are doing this professionally uh, and doing a lot of them, I like to do it this way. Uh, it can be done in the field, it can be done upside down on sawhorses, I've never really tried that. I've done it between trees, I've, I've done it between porch posts. Uh, to get the down weight, I've, I've loaded roof shingles and uh, bags of gravel, and it, it's just not the same as uh, the second step in this. The first step is to take the canvas, <clears throat> make a nice, nice fold, uh, it's number 10 duck. Uh, and I, I get it clamped in. I just need a couple of feet on each end longer than the canoe. And I make a nice little envelope. Later on, the canoe is going to go into the center of this, this envelope. And it's going to give me a hand with that. And I always want to be careful not to get junk in here before you get the canvas in there, or the canoe into the canvas, because it will telegraph through the finish later. This has been uh, drawn out tight for a few days, but here at the last minute I decided to change the height on this to a, what I think will be a, a better height. This is the first time I've done this canvassing in this, in this situation, so it, it might offer some surprises. And check things. Not coming off the wall. And I'll try to be quiet. The tension you want gives a little thump. A little bit like a drum. Now as this has stretched out a few few days, I don't need to leave it in this position too long. I'm just going to go right to the next step, which is putting the canoe inside. center line on the canvas and we want to make sure that the canoe lays right along that center line instead of being sideways one way or the other. And if we can, kind of look for any stray threads that might come in. So let's, uh, oh there's also a center line. Uh, the center line thwarts here on the canoe and I've got a center line mark on the, on the canvas. So let's, uh, let's see if we can uh, lift this bad boy in there. And you might walk away from a or something. That's kind of first step. You should So cool. And it's taking it from the computer. Take a look. You might just say, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Some nice center line tracking the canoe into the canvas. And this is how the boys in Maine do it. If I can do this without hurting myself. Here. Wait, 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 wait,
Spins it keeps the canvas right close to the to the stamps, and uh, now we get to challenge the gods and trim away some of this excess. here now is to put two brass tacks about an eighth of an inch down from the from the planking and about three quarters of an inch apart on either side of center well three quarters of an inch apart centering up because the ribs are, are fastened with a couple of ring shank bronze tacks they're a little further apart you just want to avoid those and you stay out of the center because uh, when it's time to install the outwale uh, periodically you're going to be running a screw right through the center and even though these will gobble up in a in a drill it's best to stay out of there the canvas pliers a little protection so that you don't mess up the the gunnel in whale and usually, well, I've made a mark here, and there's enough 
dirt and oil on your hand that you can see where where the, uh, the rib head is you get into a rhythm after a while I like to, to work out equally for a few feet and then go to the other side. But uh, Roland Thurlow's description of doing all this is he'll take it from the center and go right up to the last full rib. And then he'll start at the middle again and go right to the last full rib, right up to the deck. And then I go to the other side, center to each end center to the other end, but I'll probably stick with what's been working for me. Alright, so we've got another one to do here. I get a little, just a little blush there, I can see where the real thing is. Well, it's a different day, we're back. While Edgar was charging the batteries on the recorder, I had gotten started on the tacks at the shear line. I think I probably got about three pairs in, and uh, uh, then Edgar had to go away. And I finished out the tacks. Uh, took an hour, hour and a half or so. And now I've got the, the tacks are all the way up to the last, or the first, depends on how you look at it, uh, full, full rib just behind the end of the deck and that leaves some tacks to put up at the shear <clears throat> but when we release, and that's next, when we release the, the uh, canoe from the sling here this canvas is going to relax a little bit. We'll probably have to reset at least a pair of tacks uh, to get a balance up here. I was real pleased with how the keel line uh, and the canvas have come together. I don't have much uh, to fill, you know, to, to uh, weave together here. So I guess the next thing to do is to uh, prepare to cut this loose. Edgar's going to give me a hand on that. I'm going to slip some different sawhorses underneath it. These are just in case I had a catastrophic failure of my lens. So why don't you take that 2 by 4 and I'll take this door. Okay. 
So the, the tool that comes in handy here This is a tricky part. So this was the center line of the canvas when it was in the envelope, and it's a pretty good fit to the center line of the canoe. Um, aside from making adjustments at the end here, making some of this go away, <clears throat> you have to cut the canvas. Are we wrong? Yeah, okay. So I have to cut the canvas and flap on this side, flap on that side, and tricky part is to pull one over and put some bedding compound down the stem and start to tack it out. I like to put a tack, I'll show you that later, uh, a place about right in here that sort of acts as a mechanical resistance to the canvas running. It's not likely, but uh, I kind of like to do that anyhow. So I'm going to come to get a pencil. I'm thinking that I can take this conservatively up to about here and work with that. Handed, and I want to finish out the second flap on this side. So I'm going to work on attaching this side first. That way I'll be more comfortable in the hand. Mm -hmm. This canoe was manufactured with a, uh, a what they call a shoe keel. Uh, it's about two and a half inches wide and about a half inch thick. And at best, it offered some uh, protection on beaching and the like. I have removed that feature of this canoe. Uh, for one thing, it's a place all the screws that come through from the inside. Uh, gives water a place to come into the boat. And as it is, the only real place water can come into this boat is right here in this this intersection. Right, so we'll get this cleaned up so it doesn't lose everywhere. And there's that. Planking out of the ribs to protect when you're prying against the canoe.
your soundtrack about now. When I get a few of these tacks set up here, I'll um, demonstrate just where I'm trying to place these tacks in terms of dead center. Uh, try and place. <clears throat> if I offset the tacks a little bit, this side boat, and when I come back to the other side, bring this flap over. I'll set tacks a little bit to that side and this side so that they're not all quite aligned. Ultimately, they're going to be a stand band and screws through that stand band. And it's nice if they don't have any tacks to run into when they come through. All those roll, go right through these contacts. So when I get the tacks into the stand, finish and or adjust what I've got down here at the shear. Yeah. Let these tacks, whether they're the copper ones, or the brass tacks, because they do such a good job with the sharp point. You just get them into the canvas. Now stay put so you can do this work with one hand. Watch a lot of tracking. Look at through this this course. And give you an idea of what happens next. Okay, let's uh, get a different type of tack. So I'm kind of working upside down now, so I've got my hands a little easier. I'm going to relax this set of tacks. It's a lovely little set of pliers for this. Very delicate, sharp points. Gets right in there. And these are just tapered tacks, so they'll come out real easy. Let's be gentle with the canvas. I've already kind of laid out where the ribs are here, so I don't have to do this too blind.
three more. So it's here. Right, so this is my plate. Right here. Right. This over. I promised I would show you what I was taking to do. Hmm. It's in a perfect world with a broad enough stem, you can offset the tacks to the other side. It's more or less what I've done. I've tried to keep them a little bit this side so that when I come in for my next tax, that can be a little bit on that side. So one of the things I'll do now, I'm going to take a mark and when I go to tacking this side, I'll know where I have a cup tack so that I can put the next one here instead of on top of an existing one. Right. So, the dolphinite's cleaned away. I can adjust any of these tacks here individually as I want. When I have a chance off camera to look it over good. Now, nice pair of shears are a delight. So, we're getting close to ending this phase of the demonstration. I've got this side down. I'm real happy with how this is laid out here. I don't have a lot of pucker on it. the others, other tacks at the ribs. And I was just real happy with how that worked out. I've had to chase tacks a long ways back when I've done this other ways. So, you've seen what tedium's like already. I'm not going to put you through the other side of this. <laughs> So I'll tell you what I'm going to do, which is similar to what I've done here. <clears throat> this time, instead of using dolphinite as bedding compound, I'm going to use an adhesive. It's a Sikaflex, uh, I think it's uh, 251. They make some different uh, uh, call numbers. But it's, uh, it's, I like to use the white. Mm -hmm. uh, when it cures, and it's not fast cure time, uh, uh, it'll, be, it'll be gummy in six hours and uh, tomorrow this time you'll have a hard time cutting it off with a knife. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, it's not a caulk, it's an adhesive. Mm -hmm. um, I like to try to buy the marine, uh, the product from marine stores rather than the uh, 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 the lumber yards because they tend to cater to their formulas, their formulas to the construction industry. Um, I suppose Dolphin I'd be just fine on this, except that I really like to know that the stem is not going to be leaking. So it's a messier operation because uh, it has to be cleaned up with mineral spirits. Uh, but there's enough open time that you can work it and uh, you, you can clean yourself up after you're all done uh, and the tools. So, uh, uh, anything else that I. Yeah, I can jump you just one step ahead here. So. So I'm going to get this rolled over with the right amount of Sikaflex in here, make sure I've got a nice... This is the end of my cut. It's not going any further there. And, and I'll be able to take this little bit of sag out down here when I get around to that part, but I'm going to attach it at the stem first. So I'll get that put up there, tack down, adjust the tacks over on this side as necessary, and once all cleaned up, I let it alone, I go to the other end.